Hi everybody, this is Marque with Seed Marque Studios and these are the seven most important things you need to know before you start painting with acrylics. Let's roll. So join me as we discuss these. We'll start with the canvas. The canvas panel versus the stretched canvas. The canvas panel come in standard sizes. This is a 16 by 20. I can always find a 16 by 20 frame to throw this in and because they're thin, they will go into a frame easily. Now a canvas is a very desired thing for purchasers. Canvases again have to be painted on the edges. The downfall of canvas is that this wood tends to warp and twist. They have these little things in here, these holes where you can put keys in there, and that helps. If you choose to use the stretched canvas, go ahead and get the one and a half inch deep because that way you just paint the edges and you can put it on the wall. It's wall ready. I'm gonna show you the back of this. It's very nice. You should also know that stretched canvas requires a custom built frame, which costs even more. So for beginners, I recommend that you use canvas panels to paint on for another reason, besides just being able to stick it into any frame that you can pick up at Walmart or Michaels or at a thrift store even. The way that you paint when you begin, you might not be real happy with, but you won't believe what a difference it'll make if you stick that painting in a frame. Oh. Okay, and when you get your paints, we have the jar versus a tube. This is a plastic tube and I'm also going to throw in a metal tube just so you can see the difference. Metal tubes, you open them up and there's usually a protective cover on it. Take that off. The nice thing about metal tubes is that you can squeeze them once the paint comes out. You kind of squeeze it like that and the paint that's left over inside will suck down in. So I like these. This is a plastic tube. These are the Simply Acrylics from Walmart. A lot of times the tops of these will get clogged up, but they're very easy to clean. You just take it, it's acrylic, dries like a plastic, pull it off. And then you have your jars. Now people like to buy them in jars because it's cheaper in the long run because you get more paint. But the downfall of the jar is this right here when you open it. Now you've got to get the paint out. So what you do is you take out some paint Put it on your paint palette. Then you have to clean off your little palette knife. And of course, a lot of air gets to that. The lower it gets, more air gets to it. You can't keep it burp because it's a hard jar. But like I said, you get more for cheaper. It's just when it comes to the color white. White paint is very transparent for most companies. I'm gonna show you. This is how it covers up against this black. There we go. And once it dries, you'll see what I mean. This is white. Clean off my brush. And here's the expensive white. Company named Golden. You can see the difference. You can tell already. Look at the difference. See how thick that is? That is the only paint, the white, is the only one I'm concerned about. Now you can use them for different reasons because the transparent white is good if you want to make a misty look around the moon or in the sky or in the forest or whatever. You don't have to water it down hardly at all. And then with the golden, if you want some really bright whites that are nice and thick and opaque, look at that. It's just, it's just a wonderful paint. So when it comes to my titanium white, uh, I have both because of the different circumstances, but I'll use the golden for when I need the most opaque and, and need to be able to you know, get it on there without putting on 100 coats because all of these more inexpensive whites are transparent. 
the golden rocks. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We're gonna do a test. I've heard that Windsor & Newton is the only company that makes their base with a polymer that's clear so that it dries true color. And then we're gonna try some by one of my favorite paint companies, Mont Marty. Same color, it's saffron. And we're gonna just see if one dries darker than the other. Like everybody was saying that this dried without turning darker. I gotta tell you, I'm not seeing it. So before you spend a lot of money thinking that your acrylics are not gonna dry darker, look at my experiment. I hate you to spend all that money just to find out it's really not true. Okay, we're gonna talk about paint brushes because there's a way that you can save a ton of money and a mountain of aggravation by getting quality brushes to begin with and some inexpensive and very effective brush cleaner because there is nothing worse than trying to paint a cute little painting and having a paintbrush release a ton of hairs into your painting or the paintbrush folds over or just basically doesn't do what you're trying to get it to do or you fall in love with a paintbrush and then it falls apart because it wasn't getting cleaned properly. All right, everybody that paints with acrylics knows you need a good blender brush. Um, I'm here to tell you that expensive versus cheap will blow your mind. This right here is a very expensive blender brush and it shed hairs like crazy. And I've heard so many tutorials about, don't worry about it. Just pull the hairs out after the painting dries. Yep, it's pretty easy to pull those hairs out, but it leaves a line in your painting. So I discovered a makeup brush that is sold on Amazon and it blends so wonderfully. Not only does it blend, but you can use it to paint foliage. And it's just wonderful. The flat brush. If you go to Michael's, you can get these on sale. We can get buy one for regular price and get the other one half off. Just gotta watch their sales. That's where I got mine. This is the Felbert brush. The round brush. Next up is the liner brush. This is just a cheap artist loft. It's just a, a nylon brush. It's kind of soft as you can see, but it's really good for painting backgrounds. So don't spend a lot of money on a brush for priming your canvas. And the only other thing I wanted to bring up was there are some really cheap hog bristle brushes that are crazy cheap. If you're going to paint where you need some little dots and some shapes, these little cheap brushes are fabulous. You can make a lot of shape, foliage, leaves, bushes. This is called the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. You're supposed to use warm water and it actually lathers up really well. So once you get that lathering up with the warm water and then you rub your brush in your hand like this, make sure you rinse it out real well dry it off on a towel and let it lay down to dry and then take some water and rinse this out because it will have paint residue in it so rinse it out keep it clean then put the lid on it can you see the difference in these two lights well 
they both are the same watts, but one is a nice LED soft white and the other one is an LED natural light. The yellow one is a disaster for an artist. So there's that purple color under the yellow light, which is just a soft white LED. And there's the purple and blue under the LED that's called a natural light. Same watts. So if you're going to be doing this for a hobby, you're going to need a bright white. It's called natural light because it mimics the sun. If you are a new artist and you are just starting out, do you really have to have an easel? Well, can you sit down comfortably and paint on a table? Could you prop up your painting if you can't paint on a table on something else? You could prop it up on a couple of things to just give yourself a little bit of height. Acrylics are not like watercolor. They're not going to run down anyways. So you can paint them up or down. So. I paint on flat surfaces and I paint on easels. It doesn't mean you have to have one if you're just starting out. And if you don't know if you want to do this for a hobby or just trying it, I would recommend not getting an easel. But then, if you really like it and you are going to get an easel, do not buy a cheap aluminum easel. Don't do it. <laughs> the ones I've had have broken. They weren't sturdy enough when I painted. Um, it was a waste of money. Don't, don't do that. Don't. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to save you. <laughs> if you do really enjoy this and you do want to be, a, you know, make it into a hobby and you want to get an easel, um, the wooden ones are so sturdy. They're like a piece of furniture. And I'm going to show it to you right now. This is my wooden easel. Make sure you get one that has the flat legs on the floor because that's what makes it sturdy and it holds your canvas in place and will last a long time. Number seven, a subject of paint. You can either go outside and look at a landscape, you can print off a picture, um, so you don't have to worry about copyright, <laughs> take your own pictures. Other than that, you would just need an object. 